Alright, and we're back here with Xarxis again. This time okay. we're looking at... See, I told you I'm going to mess it up. That's why I call you XAR. Um, we're back here. This time we're looking at the nuclear reactor setup that these guys have. And it is amazing, I have to say. And you have this controlled through open computers as well? It will be. It is not yet automated. Okay. Um, so here we've taken that build that we were doing on the GT5 server and made it work. So we have a giant water tank, uh, 20 million uh, in there. We have a giant distilled uh, water tank. Oh, yeah, that um, is a lot of distilled water. Yeah. Um, we weren't quite sure how much we were used, so we made a lot, um, because that's realistic to how much you use in a real reactor. Um, right next to you is the cool IC2 coolant tank. Um, behind you is the hot IC2 coolant tank. Our first, uh, titanium machine here is our, uh, large heat exchanger, or sorry, liquid heat exchanger. Um, and then if you look in the GUI, we put in the integrated circuit and it's set to 21. Um, that's to bring down the rate that it uses and produce it, that it uses coolant slash produces steam um, for a little bit of loss um, so that we can match it to the high pressure turbine, which is next to it. Um, and uh, Axel made two high-pressure fluid pipes uh, to work that. Uh, from there, we have two uh, large turbines to take the steam output. So we go from our superheated steam in the high pressure to regular heated steam in the low pressure. And um, then there's our steam line. Um, and then this light pink uh, steel fluid pipe in the back is our distilled water line. So that goes back into that distilled tank. Um, in order to produce the distilled water, we were running these basic distilleries, which are very, very, very slow. Yes, they are. Um, and eventually we didn't like that, so we did some lava because the um, OE or whatever that is uh, centrifuges more cheaply than straight lava, so we were going to centrifuge it anyway. So there is a liquid heat exchanger, steam generator, um, and a condenser. This is what it. These are actually some of the parts that you would see in a normal IC2 fluid reactor. Um, we're not using them because we're making the Greg Tech fluid reactor. Um, and then we have our massive bat buffer up here, extreme voltage, uh, over a dozen laptrons in there, laptrons in there. Um, and then nestled in the back here, um, we have uh, Axel's prized reactor. And this is the setup you guys are using here, huh? Yep, it is uh, crap. You might probably not ought to have done that. I uh, scrolled my mouse wheel over it, and of course that takes it out of that inventory and puts it in yours. Yeah. Um, so there's quad uranium rod in there, some iridium neutron reflectors to amplify it. Um, it makes a bunch of heat, um, but actually quite not enough. Um, we have this um, 6 million hot coolant tank, um, and we're building another reactor just to, so that we can fill it quickly. Um, but honestly, right now, at the rate that we're using power, we don't need to leave it on. 
Okay. So we can, um, underneath the floor here, um, there's the hot pipe for the coolant in here. And so there's a lever here and we can flip it on and we can see the turbine should kick on. Turbine should kick on. The it, turbine should kick on. There it is. It's trying, but it's not, it looks like it's not getting enough. Um, it does produce steam as it's coming up. There we go. Oh, um, it does produce steam as it comes online. Um, uh, liquid heat exchanger produces steam instead of superheated steam. Um, also, it might just be consuming all of that very quickly. Um, there we go. They appear to be staying on now. Um, also, we're waiting uh, for the fluid in the pipes to balance. Um, so that takes a little bit of time for the fluid to balance and not slosh around in such a way that it impacts uh, the machines running. So we've got that running now. And we can see that we're gaining lots and lots of energy. We can supposedly see that we're gaining lots and lots of energy. <laughs> well, they were at 700 when we were here a second ago. Oh, no, it's still 718 on that bottom one. There they are. They're ticking up now. So they climb quite rapidly. Uh, Axel last looked at it. He is somewhere between 1,500 uh, and 1,700 EUT. Um, out of that when it's running. Um, if we look over here, we're consuming um, our hot coolant relatively rapidly. And if we turn the reactor on, uh, we won't match this. So it's losing about 2,000 a second. Wow. Uh, even with the ratio turned down, we could technically turn the ratio up by modifying that circuit in the heat exchanger. And we are running the uh, newest build, so it's 22 that you had to change all the turbines, which I knew, I know uh, Axel was real happy about having to rebuild all the turbines. Yeah, they were all built and we had to rebuild them. That was fun. Yeah. Now, over here with the IC2, you're using condensers, so you're not making any power. You're just going straight to distilled water, right? Yep. That was simply to generate more distilled water and to make cheap lava to centrifuge. Okay. So if um, you were doing this for actual steam, you would take out the bottom condenser and put in the uh, IC2 uh, turbine, right? Steam turbine. So, yeah, so if we were doing IC2, if we were doing IC2 here, we would have the liquid heat exchanger um, here. We would have our steam generator at this one bar that it's set to one bar, one MB. Uh, we might crank it up to 10, I think is the recommended 10 bars. Um, and then you would have this into a uh, steam turbine. Uh, for the first one, would have high pressure steam. Um, and then you would run that into a second steam turbine and that would have low pressure steam. And then you can take the, um, water that you have back and feed it back into your steam generator. Um, you wouldn't need the condensers. Oh, okay. Cause you would already have cooled it. So this generates steam and we're cooling the steam back to distilled water. Okay. I've never gotten this to work without doing the puffing thing at you that hurts you. I tried that a oh. long time ago. Yeah, because on... you're generating too much steam. Oh, is that what it was? Probably. Ah. Uh... It looks like an explosion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're generating too much steam. Yeah, it freaked me out first time I did it. I thought I was going to blow up my fluid reactor. So we've already gone up 700K 
on the lap drawn. That's cool. On all 15 of them. And this is where the main power comes from, other than the turbines we showed last time. So the turbines we showed last time is going to be supplemental when this is offline or otherwise uh, empty. Um, and uh, we'll run this, keep those batteries a bit full. So I switched it off, so it'll start slowing down and stopping. Okay. It'll take a little bit for the system to close out, but um, if we go under the floor, you, we can, oops, not that side. Um, we can get down there over here. Um, we can see our, uh, the little bit of piping that's hidden under the floor. So a red one here is our hot coolant, blue one here is our cold coolant into the reactor. Um, and then, uh, we have the spilled in the regular water. Uh, one thing that I would note is the, uh, railcraft tanks do automatically emit only from the bottom layer into, uh, Greg Tech pipes. Um, if you want it to emit fluid at not the bottom layer, you need to put a pump on the facing side uh, to the tank. Does the tank have a limit on how much it can output per tick? It It is a lot. I think it's like 10,000. It'll fill a drum in a couple of seconds. So, a lot. Okay. So you guys I've don't have pumps on these? There are no pumps on these. Okay. That's All cool. of the fluid movement is done by the ports that automatically emit. So the turbines upstairs, they all automatically emit if there's a pipe con connected. Um, all of the bottoms of the tanks automatically emit. Nice uh, window you have here, by the way. I know, I needed to make some reinforced glass and I haven't gotten around to it. <laughs> and then we did a little bit of decorating of our ugly, ugly building. There's two cooling towers on top of the water tanks. Yeah, I seen them when I was on top of the uh, turbines last time. Those look pretty daggone good. Why, thank you. I actually have a pair of these about an hour away from my house. I live near uh, Davis Bessie in Ohio. Yeah. So, they don't you have too a bad. 60, 60, no, 40 year old nuclear reactor next to you? Mm hmm. Within an hour. They won't glow immediately if there's a problem. All right, so that's our reactor build. Uh, we need to do some automation. As you noticed uh, underneath, there's a bunch of uh, adapters and uh, open computers conduit down there. Um, and I need to program up the computer to have fun with that. OK. I'll be looking forward to coming back and seeing when you have that all set up. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting us into your builds here. Since I uh, hide over on GT6 most of the time. Yeah, you're a stranger. Yeah, stranger in a strange land. I ought to give you back your remote terminal before I run back to... And my jetpack. Oh yeah, and your jetpack. Before I run back to GT6. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So now I can be Astro again. <laughs> yep. As he flies off. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. See you guys next time.